Yo, what's going on? What's going on, y'all? Going to go live. I want to get straight to the point, but let me share out this video because I need for it to go where it needs to go. So if you're watching on YouTube, share it out. If you're watching on Facebook, share it out. And I want to share it out myself for a second. Real quick, man. Real quick. Make sure y'all share out this live, man. We go get straight to the point. Enough of the of the, the tomfoolery and all that other stuff. We go get straight to it, man. Because they trying to screw us over. Right? They trying to screw us over. We go get straight to the point today. And let me share it out. Let me let me get it to where it need to go, because I need this to go astronomical. No excuses. Listen, if you know Donald Yates personally, send him this video. Send Donald Yates this video. Shaytan, what's up? Send Donald Yates this video. He got to put his money where his mouth is. If Donald Yates feels so strong about this contract, then let's have a discussion about it on live. Right? The winner of the discussion, and we could put up a poll or whatever the case is, gets $1,000. Fill up, what's up? Do y'all think, do y'all agree with me? Do y'all think that Donald Yates should discuss the contract with me for a thousand dollars if he feels so strong about it? If he feels so strong about it, he should be able to discuss the contract with us, right? They are selling us out. They are selling us out, and I can't understand why members will vote yes. I don't understand how would you, how can you vote yes? If you vote yes, you don't understand inflation, you don't understand wages, you don't understand COLA, you don't care about working in a pandemic, you don't care about night differential. What do you care about besides coming to work? There's no way possible with a sound mind that you could vote yes for this contract. You know, they got the, we not even go discuss the Medicare Advantage thing, right? People work through a pandemic. They want their pandemic pay. Where's that pandemic pay at? We the only city agency that don't get 10% for night differential. Did you know that? Every other city agency do that, right? And I'm surprised Eric Adams gave the city workers a better deal than what we got. The city workers, they contracts go up to 4%. <clears throat> Their contract go up to 4%. Did y'all know that? It's no way possible, man. We we this is this is like the twilight zone. Honestly, this is like the twilight zone. There's no way possible you could vote yes to this contract. They are lying to us. I mean, you could just go through my YouTube. Go through my YouTube and look at the videos. I'm posting receipts. I'm posting receipts. They don't got no receipts. You know what they got? David Cooper said this union is dead. This union, this union is dead. But we are waking up. The awakening is happening. I don't understand how y'all not upset that they trying to sell us out like this. But I want Donald Yates. He got a lot to say on the internet. Got a lot to say. You make, you out, you make a nice piece of change. As the VP, a thousand dollars ain't nothing. You could get somebody to put that up for you, so you won't lose nothing. But 
you would lose all credibility if you come on this live with me and discuss the contract. We could discuss arbitrations. We could discuss hazard pay. We could discuss whatever you want to discuss regarding this contract. Facts, David. Co-workers are asleep. I agree with you on that. But sooner or later, they're going to wake up. Because it's going to be something that's going to affect them. And I thought that's this would have been it. I thought the fact that nobody got hazard pay, that would have been it. But that, that seems not to be the case. That seems not to be the case. I just want to know what we going to do about it, man. What, what are we... What are we going to do about this? Oh, let me get this right. He said, my boy Roberto said they think of us as crumb bums. I hear you. And, 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 and um, Philip, you're right. They parading around this contract. They know. See, this is the, this is the crazy part. They know that the members, for the most part, don't know a lot about the contract a lot of people don't like to discuss politics and a lot of people just not paying attention so they parading around these properties saying hey we got this we got that we got this we didn't no concessions this this contract is a concession contract the fact that we had paid family leave and then they gutted it out and only made it for childbirth you don't even get that if you Adopt the child or whatever the case is. There's a whole bunch of give backs. There's enough give backs to make the MTA agree to this contract. Let's say that. My boy Joey Vasquez said, the Arctic pay is a joke. Look, if anybody want to tap into this live, request to go live with me. I'm, I, I'll take some, um, I'll take some, I'll take some, um, calls. Or I'll answer some questions. Or if you got something on your mind, tap in. Tap in. We getting, we go, we go get to it. But if you friends with Donald Yates, putting this on the record, let's have a discussion about the contract in front of the people. The winner get a thousand dollars. You're going to lose. Donald Yates is going to lose. They going they sold boxes. And, and, and this is not only, let me make this clear too. This is not exclusively to Donald Yates. A, B, G. Anybody can get it. Tap into the live. Tap in. I want to, is anybody out there voting yes for the, matter of fact, how you, for the people that's watching, we got like 60 some people online. Type in the comments how you voting. Are you going to vote yes? You going to vote no? Type in the comments. I want to see. I want to get somebody who's going to say yes. Let's have a discussion. Maybe I'm not getting it. Maybe I don't understand. I don't know. But we got to have a discussion on this. You know what I'm saying? Because I will. I'm about to take that Yates video that he got floating around. And about to do a, a what's the lie on that. And probably release it sometime on the weekend. But. And I want to say this, man. Shout out to buses, right? I for sure thought y'all was going to be a landslide. Um, yes, uh, as far as on the internet, I see a lot of people on buses saying no. Salute to y'all. Salute to y'all because it's obvious that y'all know y'all worth. Now, I mean, and for the other people outside of buses and maintainers, I want y'all to think about this. Buses got the best deal this contract, right? They got the best deal this contract. And they saying no. And you ain't get sugar honey icy. And you're saying yes. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. Right? It makes absolutely no sense. I can't get this out of my mind. Eric Adams gave the city workers a better contract at all 75 percent of the city contracts was handled today he gave the city workers a better contract than we have right they got annuity some of them
They have night, dif real night differential, not this um, this bootleg night differential that we get, right? They got five weeks vacation after five years, uniform a lot. I mean, they got it all, and we got nothing. We got to see somebody say Eric Adams is dirt. If Eric Adams is dirt, then what is Kathy Hochul? You want to know why? This is Kathy Hochul's union. This is TWU Hoku 100. It was TWU Cuomo 100, but now it's TWU Hoku 100. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. Could you imagine that? TWU Hoku 100. I just don't get how... Um, People just don't feel a way about this, man. Like, I don't know. I, I've been I've been seeing people say, or you know, my a lot of people close to me say, Tramel, you too good for this place. This this place don't deserve you. And I'm starting to see that. I'm starting I'm starting to feel that way because I can't imagine why people will vote yes to something that's detrimental to their livelihood. I just don't get it. And to buses, I need y'all to pay attention, right? When I do, when I chop up Yates, where's the live video? And I think Sean Battaglia says something about um, uh, Artix is coming, it's the five, the three, whatever the case is. Everyone knows in buses, Artix kill runs, right? That's without a doubt. It kill runs, and it's basically eight hours, right? The union is setting the transit authority and giving them giving them open access to make buses be eight hours. Now buses, if you're gonna vote yes, just think. Could you survive off of eight hours a day? Because that's what's coming. That's what's coming. Them Arctic buses is gonna kill runs. Those Arctic buses is gonna kill overtime. If you cool when in the future working um eight hours a day and what's that? Eight times four, getting an extra thirty-two dollars. That's probably not gonna pay for your toll, right? Because remember, the union didn't negotiate nothing about congestion pricing for you guys at all. She ain't cheap, nothing, right? And then our union. Let me tell you, let me let me put y'all on to some game about how a union is supposed to function. We not supposed to be on the Democrat side. We not supposed to be on the Republican side. We supposed to be on the side of the politician, whoever's doing for us. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're an independent. I don't care what you are. We should be siding with the politicians who's doing for us. This union has taken the side of the Democrats and the Democrats have done nothing for us. Right? They have done nothing for us. Why are we so beholden to the Democratic Party? Cuomo got at us with tier six. The union said, oh, it's worth its weight in gold. Oh, he's going to veto it. Don't worry. He's going, I mean, he's, he's going to put an exception for transit workers. What Cuomo did in 2019, he vetoed the bill. And our union still support Democrats. They just had Kathy Hochul at the union hall. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. What did she do for us? What, what did Kathy Hochul do to us? Somebody said, because this is a Democratic state, Sean the Don Monroe. How you doing, my brother? This is a democratic state, but as a union, we should be apolitical, which means that we should go. Y'all remember that song? Um, I think it was Janet Jackson. What have you done for me lately? That's the vibe that the union should be on. We should not be giving our money to politicians who have done nothing for us. This union is so wild is that they give our coke money. To people who voted for Tier Six Plus. God damn. God damn. Huh. 
Celso said Cuomo gave us one, 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 one. Cuomo didn't give us nothing. The union accepted it. The union accepted it. The Cu Cuomo can't give us nothing that we ain't willing to accept. If somebody walk up to you and say, hey, here's some cocaine, you go take it? No, you got a chance. To, you got to, you got to, you can reject that. Right? Why are we not doing that here? And for everybody, I, I, yo, it's so much stuff going online. I think that I'm going to shut it down. Or I'm, uh, I got to like disconnect from the internet for a second because people out there saying some wild stuff. Oh, you know, we don't, we shouldn't get paid as much as Long Island Railroad and Metro North because they engineers and we train operators. What the fuck? What? What? They engineers. What does that mean? They don't move more people than us. They don't um, deal with the hazards that we deal with. Most of their lines are outside. Right? They don't get disciplined like we get disciplined. We deal with way more in New York City transit. Way more. And we just got to, like, we just got to put our foot down one time to show this city and show this administration that we got the power as the people, not them. Not them. This is the time for us to revolutionize how we behave and act as union workers. This is the time for us to make the change of what's needed in New York City transit. It's not hard to do. Just got to stand up, stand for something. That's all you got to do. None of this is, is hard. This is not rocket science. There's really nothing to fear. Voting for this contract is fair. Voting yes for this contract is fair. F-E-A-R. Like people is literally thinking that they could lose their job over this, but they're not thinking about being homeless because they can't pay their rent. Because you can't afford to live in the city in which you work. So what you do, you become a transit refugee, you move to Pennsylvania, you move to Connecticut, you move to Jersey, you move to, to Delaware, you move in all these different places because your pay can't keep up with what's going on out here in the real world. This is happening in real time, people. Like who wants to spend three, four hours a day traveling just to get to work, round trip. Who wants to do that? It takes three hours to get to Puerto Rico, two hours to get to Florida. Those are the kind of trips that we should be thinking about round trip. That shouldn't be every day that you're doing this. We, we, we deserve better. I never hear police officers complain and say that they can't pay their rent. I never heard sanitation say that. I never heard FDNY say that. I never heard corrections say that. I heard transit workers say it. It's a fact. I hear transit workers say it all the time. And us as transit workers, we could play the games all we want. We could we could be, oh, yo, uh, nah, I'm I'm doing good. You know, you got the foreign and the and the and the uh and the, and the yard and you know, you got the house, but I guarantee you, as soon as they take back that overtime, the repo man, somebody coming for something. Stop thinking that overtime is a part of your salary. It's not. That's extra. Management is already setting in place to get rid of the overtime. You see, the thing is that y'all not reading the MTA financial reports. They made it clear that the reason for the overtime now is because they filling up gaps with um with with employee availability. They about to they the this contract 
is about to fix the employee availability. Why? Because the union have a stake in it. That whole gain sharing thing, and and I'm gonna talk about this when I clip up the Donald Yates and the Sean Battaglia video because they was they was talking a lot of management talk. They was talking a lot of management talk. Um, yeah, you know the gain sharing and one day is worth this, and if we get this, they split this with us. The union is contracted as partners with the MTA to help out with employee availability. Why do you think they're not trying to fix the workers' comp situation? They don't want to fix the workers' comp situation because they know the MTA force us to come back to, to come back to work before time. Think about this. You get hurt at work. The MTA, I don't know what kind of algorithm they use to controvert your case, but they use some type of algorithm and they controvert your case. You hurt. Two things is not happening now. You're not getting paid. They not, um, they controverting your claim, which means that you can't get no services, can't get no surgery. You can't get no whatever the case is, right? Now picture this. This is straight regular knowledge. This is common sense. If you need a surgery and the doctor said that you need a surgery and the MTA controverts your case so you can't get your surgery and you wait in eight, nine months to get the surgery, what happens to your body in that injury? What happens to your body in that injury? It don't heal properly, right? Why, why the union never tried to sue the MTA regarding how they controvert and claims? And check this out. I need y'all. Now I'm going to get to some, some, a little bit of the healthcare and the Medicare Advantage. Why do you think the union agreed to the Medicare Advantage? Because they're going to save with that too. They're going to save with that too. Or they're going to get money from the MTA to fund other, to fund other, um, Initiatives, I guarantee you, if this contract goes through, all of a sudden, the MTA and the union, and I want y'all to bookmark this, the MTA and the union is going to come up with some more money in the child care, more money somewhere. They go throw a couple of hundred thousand somewhere, and the union go try to sell it as, hey, look what we got. We, we went to the MTA and we fought for y'all. No, this union administration is in the, is in the business of helping the MTA prosper on a managerial level. Sometimes I have to question myself, who do the union represent? MTA or the members? Sometimes I gotta question myself. I'm like, yo, what's, what's, I don't know what's going on here. Right, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. And, and it's sad that you got to even think that your union is sidestepping you with management. But you got to believe what you see. Don't let them tell you that your eyes is lying to you. Why nobody didn't ask Donald Yates yet at any of these shop gates or Richie Davis at any of these shop gates? Why he didn't have his VPs at the table helping him negotiate the contract. This is the first time they did that. This is the first time they did that. Let me see my bro, bro Bam. He said he got paid after eight months. Picture that. You heard that work and you ain't getting paid. They fighting you on, on every level. David Cooper said them negotiations need to be transparent. The negotiations need to be public. It should be, it's the no, the negotiation should be live stream. They should be live stream. My boy Leonard said the MTA and the union is one of the same. Absolutely. You can't even tell them apart. You can't even tell them apart. This is, this is, uh, this is mind boggling. This is this is mind boggling, y'all. This is mind boggling. I, I I just don't get it. I mean, 
I have so many members asking me, how do you, how do you opt out of the union? And, you know, that's a sad thing. Members asking, how do you opt out of the union? But you want to know what? I totally get why they want to opt out of the union. I get it. I get why they want to opt out of the union. I get why people feel like this is not working for them. I get it. I get and and it's coming to a point where it's hard to defend the union's actions. They not democratic. They they cheat at elections. They constantly move the goalpost at union meetings as far as motions and stuff is concerned. People, we, we got to wake up. We got to wake up. This is, this is not working out for us, right? And another thing with the elections, I want to say this. There was an election going on um, in the Bronx for six division vice chair, right, between... Um, two candidates and the uh, Richie Davis supported a candidate or whatever the case is, that candidate lost, right? That candidate lost. We got to get rid of slate votes because a lot of them, a lot of bad reps get in because of the slate votes. We have to get rid of slate votes somehow. We have to. We have to. We have to get rid of slate votes somehow. Um, we are being governed by a corrupt entity of Local 100, corrupt entity of the MTA, and they work in hand in hand. They work in hand in hand. My, my brother Lance say, yeah, let me say this real quick. Did you guys know that the MTA collect 30 plus million dollars? 30 plus million dollars. And union dues a year from us. Think about that. They collect 30, I said 30,000, 30 million dollars. 30 million dollars a year from us and union dues. Do you see where that money is going? I mean, I see their salaries, they salary six figures. They taking trips all throughout the country. They got cars. Every VP get a car. What about the members? What are, what are we getting out of that? Like, we should be self-sufficient. We should not have to get any of our initiatives funded by management. We shouldn't need tough to be funded by management. We shouldn't need um, management to, to fund the child care fund or whatever the case is. We should be self-sufficient. We don't need management to collect our union dues for us. That's the sign of a lazy union. We have the MTA collecting our union dues for us. We get $30 million a year. They should have a system somewhere in place where we won't have to deal with management about how much dues they collect for us. Because picture you letting your enemy know what you got in your war chest. The MTA, but oh, they can't go on strike because they collect this amount of dues and this is how their money is broken up and this, that, this, that, this, that. Why are you letting the MTA collect our union dues? It's the sign of a weak union. Let me see what you guys are saying. He said a reality show on transit. Yeah, we, we doing a reality show. We, we they worst nightmare. Us a progressive action, we they worst nightmare. We've been consistent, consistent, even with my medical condition. I'm, I'm still recovering. My leg is still swollen. I'm still getting my thing together. The work don't stop. The work don't stop. But I'm going to tell y'all this. A lot of what the union is getting away with is our fault. Right? We allow them to get away with this. The only time we, we want to get involved is when something affects us directly. That's the only time we really want to get involved. 
right? We don't go to union meetings. We don't go to rallies. We don't really support activists. You know, I'm grateful of the support that I get from you guys. But there's 43,000 members in this union. 43,000 members. And there's only probably like a few hundred active people in the whole entire union that actually go participate in the main function of the union, going to union meetings, rallies, and things of that nature. Even even on the union side, when you look at the union side and they having their rallies and things like that, it's an optical illusion. You would think that they get in the support, but more nine times out of the nine times out of ten, most of the people that's there is release reps. They not even getting the support. They not even getting the support. You understand? But we gotta we gotta hold ourselves accountable. Because the union already, they think about this. They not, they don't fear us. They know that they not getting no rebuttals. They know that they could come inside our crew rooms, inside our swing rooms, and say what they want to say. Blatantly lie on your face. John Chiarello, superintendent. Oh, no, no. I mean, um, secretary treasurer, John Chiarello, went into... Um, one of the MTA bus depots and was flat out lying to those people there. Flat out lying to those people. And he had the nerve to say, Richie Father's a retiree. Do you think that Richie will sell out his own father? Absolutely. Absolutely. Richie Davis is only concerned about Richie Davis. He only concerned about Richie Davis. He had, he had his um, his ex running the child care. Well, he ain't have her running the child care fund. He had Samuelson had her running the child care fund, and then when he became president, he tried to get rid of her. Richie Davis. Only care about Richie Davis. You know what I'm saying? He only care about Richie Davis, and a lot of these reps is. Faking the funk. I'm about to start calling y'all out. Y'all got one more shot. One more time. They acting like that they ain't messing with staying united. And they there. They messing with staying united. I'm about to start calling y'all out. I'm about to start calling y'all out. I mean, yo. I for sure thought that this was going to be the contract where we got what we deserve, right? We didn't, we, we didn't, it's not like we begging. Transit work is put in the work. We put in the work. And the things that we see in the contract doesn't say that we put in the work. And I want you to, I want you guys to think about this. You have a lot of think tanks. Shout out to um Gregory. Zephyrin, for the 400 stars. I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, you guys can also hit the cash app. The cash app is at the bottom near the comments. It's pinned, right? I want you guys to think about this when it comes to our contract. You have a think tank group that don't like the MTA. They are called the Manhattan Institute. And it's ran by a journalist named Nicole Gelinas, right? And I interviewed her one time regarding transit issues or whatever the case is, right? The Manhattan Institute have absolutely no comment on our contract. Don't you guys find that kind of peculiar? That the think tank, the right wing think tank, Manhattan Institute, Nicole Gelinas and crew don't have n absolutely nothing bad to say, oh, y'all giving them too much raises. Then the They saying nothing. But guess who's saying, guess who is saying something? The Union Full of Lies. <laughs> they pushing, they pushing the MTA narrative. The MTA is even saying, um, hold on, let me see if I can pull this person on. Let me see if I can pull this person on. Somebody requested to be in a live video. Let's get it going. If you want to be in this live video,
let's get it going. But um, Nicole Jelinas ain't got nothing bad to say about this contract. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? I'm good, man. What's, what's on your mind, my brother? I want to ask you a question, man. When we talk, talk about the union, right? Mm -hmm. Who who makes the union? The members make the union, right? That's correct. So why when these people are, that are put in position to do a job, they go in there and end up the same way that the union is? Like you cannot go against them. Oh, they tell you stuff like, oh, well, you know, I mean, that's the way it is over there. I mean, I, I, that's easy, right? So you ever heard of the saying, power corrupts absolutely? A lot, a lot of people get around the gatekeepers of Local 100. It's either the president, the VPs, or whoever the case may be, right? They get inside these offices, and they always wanted to be a part of this club. They always wanted to be a part of the go along, get along game. The problem is that we got too many people here who, uh, us as members, we don't hold them accountable. When they mess up, we don't hold them accountable. Let me right? Ask you something. How many members, no, how many VPs are there in the union? Seven. Seven? Yeah. And, you know, and how many divisions are there in the union? Seven. Seven? division seven the seven the seven departments right so i don't know how many divisions because mow got a lot of divisions i would have to write i could write it down i can't shoot off on them now but this this contract we have man i i don't really understand in the beginning of the year inflation was 10 percent, right everything went up and never came back down Usually, during a contract, the MTA usually offer us one point below inflation. This time, they went two points below inflation. At the time when they negotiate the contract, inflation was five or six percent. So at least, why couldn't we get twelve to fifteen percent raise? And what happened to the disciplinary rules? Nothing changed, man. You ever went to a dentist? I had a dentist I was going to, and they told me, um, we got to drop you, man, because if the union even has to pay us 50 cents for x-rays, they don't even want to pay us the 50 cents. Wow. 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 They said, talk to your union, because the union don't do anything when it comes to dental. The dental plan, I end up going into the high option, because that um, Hellplex, Every time you call up a dentist and they ask you what coverage you have, once you mention Hellplex, they tell you, oh, guess what? The dentist no longer work here. They don't want to deal with it. And when you tell the, dent the union, they say, oh, well, we don't have these sort of problems. But the problems is there. Anything that the union is managing is no good. That's a fact. That's a fact. I said that today. When, when John Chiarello made that video the other day and he said that the union control the vision and the dental i ask people you want to know why your vision and your dental messed up because whatever the union administration touch they seem to destroy what department you work in gleason oh your bus operator what's going on my brother at you before you oh yeah matter of yeah. fact man, you were supposed to hit me a long yeah. time ago yeah 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 I'm, I'm there with your brother kemp man oh. Okay. I told Kemp the other day, you know, you guys get in there because I asked him if you're the if you're on the e board, right? Uh huh. Why, why are you voting yes for this contract? And why do they tell people with the belief that if you are, if you don't accept this contract, you will get worse than you got before? It that doesn't that, that's not how it works, though. Why do people say these things to get the members scared to into voting in for this contract? I've spoken with you before in person, and um, you know what's going on. You, you, you could, you could, I could give you some time on this live to explain to the people because you understand actually what the business is here. Yeah, the, the, actually, the, we, we are the union. We're supposed to be changing people.
guys like Richie Davis that, um, I mean, I, I never seen a contract like this where the members were kept in the dark. They're like, they not away until, and then you ask the Ebo and members, they tell you, oh, well, when we got to the table, everything was there already. It's like, what happened? They have wool over their eyes that they can't see. Even you though know, you nothing, you're supposed to ask. You, you know that they don't give the Ebo members a physical copy of the contract. They uh, let them view it on a, um, a teleprompter or whatever the case is. So, let me ask you, slide show. is this because yeah. of the bylaws that the union has this power to do what they want? It has nothing to do with the bylaws. It's just that the e-board don't never challenge them on it. Um, historically, with Stand United, the e-board has been pro Stand United, right? They're, they're, the e-board do not challenge um, this administration. They go, they go along with the rest of the plays. Like, it took allegedly weeks to figure out this contract for them to negotiate this contract. Why are they only allowing the e-board one day, a, a few hours to decide to vote on a contract that it took them weeks to negotiate? Well, you got to find out the rules of the e-board. No, no, no. It, when, uh, it, it has nothing to do with no rules. This is just what they do. This is not in the bylaws. We, we are all governed by the bylaws, including the, uh, the e-board reps. This is not in the bylaws. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm, you know, everything with this union here is like, you know, you, once you, once you get in there, it's like, you know, I have heard people, um, union reps talk a lot of stuff. And once they get in the union, it's a whole different story. They become the same people that's there already. That's the sad part. And we can't hold them accountable. It takes three years for us to hold them accountable to vote them out. What about if, what about if the members decide to opt out of the union for a month? What would happen? They would, the, the, the union would cry. The union administration would cry. And listen, that, that have been the talk. That have been the talk of the town of members ready to opt out if this contract co goes through. The people who voted no was ready to opt out. I think some sh something should be done, man. You know, it's, a, it's about time that we check the union and um, see how we go about getting a new union because this union is not for the members. If you're not, if you're not keeping the, the members abreast of what's going on within, during the contract and you're keeping them in the dark, why should we be voting for you? You don't have our interests at, at heart, you know what I mean? I feel that this contract should have stopped at the e-board. I don't think the e-board should have gave this to the members. Well, you know, they, that's what they say when they get there is nothing they could do. So like they said, they put the, the, the vote is out there for us to vote it down now or vote yes or no, but it should never reach to this point though, where we have to vote, vote for it. Because if you put, if you put in mem, um, e-board members in there to do a job and you told me well, it's not really their fault. They, you know, I mean, I don't know what's going on, man. It's not, the e -board. not really. I'm saying it's not really their fault. No, no. I'm saying if you're putting them in there to do a job, mm -hmm. they're elected by the members to make a decision for us, whether it's a good contract or a bad contract. They're telling you, oh, well, we put it out there for you guys to vote on it. <laughs> you talking about, you talking about my brother Kemp? <laughs> No, it's my, 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 my. <laughs> no, but you know, he, he, I see his point though. I see his point. He's put, he's telling me, okay, well, it's up to you guys now to vote it down. Which yeah, I, don't I, make any sense, but you know, I mean, I, I understand um, his position when he, when he, um, I understand what he says when he say, okay, he has no other choice. But if you want to be a strong, um, you know, I mean, if you want to be a strong person in the union, man, sometimes you have to go against the grain, you know? I I, I agree 100%. You know, Kemp is my brother. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, huh? I know he's got to call me soon and tell me, yo, Z-Man. <laughs> now, Kemp is my brother. And, and it shows that, you know, us at Progressive Action, we don't always agree with things. I, I didn't agree with how he handled it, but, you know, I spoke to him, and he gave me um, 
his reasoning and I didn't agree with it until like the third time I heard it, to be honest. But, you know, Kimber's my brother. You know, he, he does everything. Um, there's a method to his madness. So, you know, we'll see what we'll see what happened. But as far as his members is concerned, well, we got to vote. No, he's not only on. The, he's not the only e-board members there, but um, it seems like. Ninety eight percent of the e-board members um, vote the same way. No, that that's a fact. That's a fact. And that's that's. That's a problem. I, I, I really wish that he would have he would have voted no, because I think he would have been more powerful in that vote no. And he could have still had that same. It was going to go through anyway, because 98 percent of the e-board vote yes anyway. So if he would have voted no, it would have still went through and he could have still had the same reasoning as to why. He well, you know, when um, it, um, election time come around, it's, um, it's the same scenario over and over and over again. I think what happened too, a lot of the members don't really, they say, oh, it's gonna go through. We, we're not gonna vote, it's still gonna go through. And the, 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 the division within the union is so divided. You have buses, you have maintenance, you got um, conductors, train operators, and there are too, too many fighting within the division. That's what make the union kind of weak, you know? They need, well, they, they need one leader, you know, one person to have a saying in there instead of, you know, unite all the division and make them be one. This way we'll be stronger. But the way it is set up is you have uh, maintenance, you have train conductors. I mean, we're happy with what bus operators vote on. And, you know, it, it causes a lot of controversy, man, you know. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree with you 100%. Well, look, let me get to, um. I got some other people trying to tap in. Take care, Tramiel, man. You listen, good, listen. You, thank you're, the you. one, you're the only one that got balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I then. appreciate it, man. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Let me see. There we go. Shout out to my brother Alexander Kent, man. It's a method to his madness. Stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Let me see. Let me get the next person on. So, so. Let me get my 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 guy. My yo, he been on everybody program. He was on Mons. He was on Local One Hundred Fight Back. My boy is paying attention. Let me get him to tap in. Hey, hey yo, listen. Hey. Hold on. I gotta ask you a question first, bro. Sure. Do you work? Because there's no way possible that every time I'm going live or somebody else is going live, that you're available. I'm starting to think that you management right now. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, I've been off for two weeks vacation. The first time right. I take two weeks off and I'm in, you know, getting myself in trouble. <laughs> speaking up too much and a lot of people don't like that. Um, what what, what know, depot are you out of again? I'm in West Farms Depot. Okay. And now I definitely got to watch myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the shop gate, and it was not a good, uh, good picture. It was filled with yes people, and everyone was saying yes, yes, yes. All the no people were pushed to the side, and everyone was told you uh, we expect you to vote yes because you're OA, your map store, and we expect you to vote yes. And we don't want to hear nobody saying that they're going to vote no. And obviously me, I stood up and said, hey, I'm, I, I'm the only one that's going to be voting no. And these are the reasons why. And I was even handed a microphone. Really? And I, yeah, and, and I was basically told not to ask any questions and to just be quiet to, uh, specifically. Um, it was something out of a, uh, something I wouldn't, expect it in my wildest dreams i'm not a type of person that look for attention i try to lay low and i never thought in a million years i'll be doing a live or being on facebook <laughs> they started out with uh these people on facebook you're lying and executive board you're liars and don't believe them but i kept getting that evil eye from the corner you know <laughs> uh, obviously as a bus operator I gained some weight <laughs> ever since after COVID. So they kept giving me the evil eye and kind of, you know, when, you know, when somebody's giving me the evil eye and they see I'm taking 
taking notes. Everyone's just rah, 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 cheering on. And yeah, 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 like it's a, a, a indoor rally, you know? Now, let me ask you a question. I don't remember correctly. Do you have an autistic child? Was no, that I, you? no, I don't. No, that wasn't you, okay. I, I, I don't, but obviously there's no, um, no specific in what people are getting and that's the problem with this plan is that it's too lucid and it's not specific enough a lot of the benefits we're getting are not they say they're locked in but we don't know the devil in the details we don't know all those little things that are stipulations that come along with what they're doing at first they denied that the arctic pays whatever Re reduce runs that will reduce and that was a big admission for them to say you know three to five there's three you know for every three shorties i mean sorry for every three arctics this is going to be is going to replace five five shorties so that's an admission that they never had admitted before and basically i heard a lot of the stuff that they were saying and a lot of people were upset at me for even standing up and speaking up. Some people were proud of me and said, you know what? You had guts to even stand up there and, 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 and speak. And some people did say, let him speak at least. And uh, it was like, okay, um, you can only ask one question and hurry up. But they were going out for an hour and 45 minutes. So for them to give me one minute of their time, it was too much time. What question did you ask? My question was just a statement. My statement was, we went through hell for the last three years, COVID, and now long-term COVID. A lot of us suffered a lot. And, and it was like, okay, get to the question, okay? I, I started to ask the question and, and it was a little bit long-winded and I said, how did uh, how did other agencies, uh, our city agencies, get more money than we did? In other words, it, they're saying we got the same pattern bargaining, and they're arguing that DC thirty-seven got the same thing we got. That NYPD um, doesn't. We don't carry guns, and our jobs are not dangerous. And I say, oh, hold on, what are you saying? Yes, our jobs are dangerous dangerous and we don't carry guns and but our jobs are still dangerous so we deserve to be paid more i also said that the teachers just ratify their contract you know you still have to find out the details of it but from what i'm seeing teachers after eight years they're going to be making at least a hundred thousand dollars um and i said they have summers off they have holidays off they have weekends off. They're still working, but they 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 have a little bit more flexibility. They, they have summers off. Work. Summers off with pay. With pay. <laughs> so I was interrupted and said, "So what are you doing here?" By mm. different, different executive board members and said, "What are you doing here then?" And I and I said, um, "You know, I also you know have a degree, but I was being uh, how can I say?" It was like a, a movie because I was being antagonized and berated by some of the executive board members saying, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You know, trying to distract me and keep me from speaking up. And I said, give me a chance to speak up and at least give my, my voice and give my opinion of what I have to say. Um, and then it was said, you know, I'm not using names because it's a little delicate and I want to make sure how I phrase it. But basically our representation was speaking more like management mm -hmm. and that got me upset. And I said, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because the reason why they're giving, uh, you know, teachers a lot more, they make 151,000 after five years. NYPD making, NYPD is making 131,000 after five years we're not even close to there and i said we work 60 hours a week and i said i saw the deterioration of the schools and, and the more hours we had to put in the less breaks we had and 
the job became extremely difficult. So I said, I don't want this to be that type of job that keeps going downhill, downhill, and now they're having problems retaining people. And we still are having problems retaining people here. So I was immediately shut down. They jumped right in and said, let's take a picture of all the people who are voting yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm a gentleman because that's the way I was raised. And I, sh I still shook their hand. And just they, I know that no one liked, a lot, the people that were there didn't like it, the way they spoke to me and the way they treated me because I don't carry myself in that way. And I have never carried myself in that way. No matter how much I lose or, you know, it's like I show my kids, uh, you know, you got to be a good, good sportsman. And even if things don't go your way, you got to still allow the other person to speak and also be able to shake their hand and be, and, and do things the right way, even if you lose. So I didn't expect this from grown people to act that way. And I'm sure they're going to be upset and I'll face repercussions because of it. But at what point do you have to take a stand and say, you know what? I'm worth more than this. I'm worth more than how you're treating me. I'm worth more than what you guys think will work. It was like kind of like a, I was making a joke. But I wasn't making a joke because I think we are worth more. We do put our, our, our lives at risk every day. And we also put our mental health at risk, our physical health at risk. And I thought that the higher ups would understand that and not have that attitude like, oh, you know what, dismiss me as a member as if I was just one member speaking up. Ah, he's just a complainer. And he's just one of those people speaking up on Facebook, spreading those lies. And I'm not that type of person. If I'm going to put something out there, I make sure I fact check it. And I make sure that's accurate. And I also don't like to do that, yeah, to put stuff out there that's not accurate. So most of the time, I research it. And I never thought I would have to be live and be saying the MTA and the union are behaving in the same way. And it's sad right. to hear. All right. Yeah. That's well, amazing. Thank, th thanks for tapping in, bro. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's always good to hear from you. Definitely. We're about to get to some more people who yeah, want to tap in. Definitely. But keep up. Listen, we got to speak behind the scenes. I got to get you on board with this progressive action thing, man. It's, it's, listen, it's diff difficult. I've never been part of any, like, serious party or been part of any political leaning. I've been more independent, independent and more objective and not just taking one side, but taking what I see as the, the right conclusion and the right way to handle things. Things are way too expensive. New York is expensive right now. Rent is out of control. They're about to raise rent uh, this week. Yep. Another seven percent in New York. Yep. yep. And those are the. And we're not even living in rent stabilized apartments. Most of us are living in uh, uh, market rate apartments. Yep. There's no mo longer any rent stabilized apartments in New York. It's out yep. of control. So for us to stand there and say something, people, people should listen to us. That's right. Because we are the ones that are struggling and and trying to feed our families. That's right. Living in New York. Right. All right. Thank. Well, thank, thank, you. thank. Thanks again, bro. All right. Thank. Take care. Have a good day. Okay, bye. Right. He brought up a good point. I forgot to touch on. The rent is about to go up. Right. The rent is going up. I think to like seven percent. That's crazy. How 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 is this contract beneficial to us? 7% a year. How is this contract beneficial to us? Dag, I lost, let me see. Did I lose the person who wanted to come on? Yeah, yeah I lost the person who wanted to come on. Um, if you want to tap in real quick before it gets too dark out here, uh, tap in.
tap in the live. I want to hear what you got to say. I want to hear what you're thinking. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to agree with me. You can disagree with me. We can have a conversation. We can have a discussion. Somebody had somebody tag Donald Yates to this video. Tell Donald Yates to tap in. We got to have this conversation right now. He ain't doing nothing. He probably drinking some Guinness right now anyway. At the least, man, everyone should be at least sharing the videos out. They should be donating. Support the people who support you. Progressive Action is fighting for you guys. Y'all see Drummond making videos. Y'all see Nuke making videos. Jason, Jason has probably been out of all, all the Progressive Action right now. I probably knew Jason Norris the longest, right? And this, Jason just started doing lives, holding a great amount of people, a crowd. He is doing great. I see James Aponte said, vote no. That is the language that we speak in. We are only speaking, vote no. That's all we're speaking about. Vote no. If you want to vote yes, tap into the live. Let's talk about it. Tap into the live. Let's, let's, have, a, let's have a conversation. That's all it's about, agreeing to disagree. We have a conversation. We all grown. Nobody's emotional. But this job is not going to be what it's going to be if we vote. If we vote yes, we throwing away everything. Everybody in New York City got a, got a, uh, nobody got paid. Nobody got the percentages in which they should have gotten. Let's get that straight, right? Nobody's gotten the percentages that they should have gotten due to inflation. Nobody got the hazard pay. But out of all the city agencies in which we pat and bargain with, they all got more than us. That's enough for us to say no right there. We should just say no right, right there. I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is wild, man. I just don't, I just don't get it. Somebody tap in. I want to hear what's on your mind. So I'm, in buses and i think you have a great point about voting no thank you toya rogers Just tap into the live press the um press the button to come live with me i want to i definitely want to hear from um from buses because y'all got the best portion of this contract for the people that's an mta bus y'all sat there and y'all allowed them in y'all um swing rooms y'all still don't got no sick days i, I don't know if y'all if y'all understand that for other people who don't know about the politics in this union MTA bus, the buses that's in Queens, that TWU Local 100 represent, they have no sick days. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? MTA bus have no sick days. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? MTA bus have no sick days. That's insane. Toya Rogers says she's in ATU. You can still tap in because you want to know what? Whatever y'all get in AT, whatever we get in TWU, um, y'all going to get in ATU. This is TWU Hoku 100. You, you guys are going to get the same thing. ATU, everybody should be up in arms. ATU, triple SA, triple SA. Why y'all not saying nothing? Because ask Karube. Whatever we accept, that's who's getting in the next percentage-wise. You guys are. Y'all should be pushing the envelope saying, vote no. Should vote no. I need y'all to hit up that cash app. That cash app is at the bottom of the screen. Dollar sign, Progressive Action 100. Support who supports you. Share out this live. It's very important. We got to break the algorithm. The union is out there. The union is out there right now on their horses, going to these different crew rooms, shop gating, telling lies. They can't beat the internet. The internet is undefeated. Internet is undefeated. I mean, shout out to my, my brother Roberto Martinez. He helped 
that bus operator that was running against um that was running against Richie Davis candidate to win. He was pushing him on a platform. People was hitting me up like, "Yo, we go vote for him." I was like, "Y'all ain't got a horse in the race." But you know, we we go we go. Roberto was was was, was supporting him. So shout out to Roberto Martinez making that right choice to show that you know the internet is undefeated and we got the power and the members are all listening to us. Now I mean. But we gotta, we gotta, we're about to step it up a notch, man. We have to step it up a notch as a union. We have to step it up a notch. We gotta hold people accountable. Y'all heard what Celso Garcia was saying. He was like, yo, they was they, they was trying to mock him, make fun of him, and all this other stuff in the crew rooms. That's not democracy. That's not fair. That's not how things should be done. Not at all. That's not how things should be done. Well, look. Once again, please donate to the platform. The cash app is dollar sign progressive action one zero zero. If you're watching on YouTube, send um you can donate there. Whatever mechanism I got set up on YouTube to donate, I forgot which one it is. I, I don't I don't have control of it. But um definitely donate to the platform. Super chat, I think that's what it's called. Donate via super chat, donate via cash app, and support who supports you. Catch you guys later and my dog is saying peace <laughs>